Okay. Today is October 20th, 2020. So 10, 2020. Okay. Now, first things first, uh, labs. Uh, there are still some questions about labs. So I'm just going to quickly um, uh, divert to this thing for now. Uh, okay, so here is week number five, October 19th to 23rd. And subsections B join in. So if you were in section one, you would normally come uh, to the lab today. Uh, so section 1B is scheduled for today's lab. And uh, the next lab is going to be this week, which I think is tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be 2B. So uh, normally section 2 would join tomorrow, I think it is. And then uh, uh, whoever is in section 2B is coming tomorrow. So 1B today. Uh, and the next week are going to be subsections A. So 1A next week and 2A next week. So subsections B. Now there was a little bit of a hurdle that we had to go, that we went through. Uh, there were some uh, people who were not able to join. Uh, so. I think we should have enough space. Uh, so just uh, just come in. So if you were not, if you were scheduled uh, for last week and you didn't come, uh, just uh, just please show up today. All right. But only for sections that were supposed to be scheduled. Admit, admit. People are still knocking at the door here for this class. Join in. We only are able to host 12 people. When is it today? The lab? The lab today is at your normal schedule time, which would be 12 o'clock. No, sorry, 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 one o'clock in room B1006. One till three, yes. Well, somebody still waiting here. Admit. Admit. I'll just have to keep. Looks like Jack is having troubles with logging in. All right, I'll be looking sometimes at the screen here uh, to see who is joining in. And if you don't know which section you are in, this is how you find out. Uh, where are we here? This is our class portal right here. And in the announcements, this is the announcements for today's lecture. Quiz one. Please, guys, do not procrastinate, but uh, I guess people are waiting for the last minute. There will be no extension. Uh, there will be no extensions for writing the quiz. You have a whole week. So uh, to, uh, the quiz one is available online. Uh, you just go in there and write the quiz. Um, October 15th, 12 a.m. until October 23rd, 12 a.m., which means it's basically the end of October 22nd. So the whole day, October 22nd until midnight. So once the midnight strikes, it's going to turn into October 23rd. The quiz is going to be closed and there will be no extensions. It's an open book quiz. Uh, and it, it, you had a whole week to do this. Please do not ask me for extensions. I will not even respond to the emails. Okay. I'm bad. Actually, I'm good. I'm going to give you a whole week to write the, the, the quiz, and it's an open book. So please do not even ask me to extend the deadlines, all right? 
Uh, now, is it just uh, lab one? It's lab one and two combined together. All right. So here's the announcements. Here are the announcements, and one of the announcements is lab schedule adjustment. And this is the file that you can download and you can keep that. And that's what this file looks like. It looks like this after you download. That's the last page. And if you are wondering which section you are in, the first couple pages are going to show you by the name. So you should have no problem figuring out which section you are in. All right, let's uh, let's go to the to today's lesson. Let me queue up. Um. All right, we're going to try to get two. Uh, uh, two types of telephone systems, the conventional telephone system, which is going to be a lot of review from last time. There are going to be similar information, but they just overlap. Um, I can just skip that. Um, and then we're going to go to a VoIP, which is voice over IP. Uh, let's see how much we can cover. If, uh, if we can cover both, we can cover both. If not, we're going to spill over to the next, um, next week. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. Okay, telephone systems, conventional telephone systems. What do we see here on the screen? Uh, well, we see a couple of, uh, we see a few things here that are associated with uh, conventional telephone systems, uh, which would have like a little bit of a telephone system here, a telephone system here. PBX or private uh, branch exchange or KSU, K, uh, key system unit. Uh, now, uh, some of them are bigger, some of them are smaller, uh, capable of more telephone extensions and more telephone lines coming in. Uh, but basically the idea is to, the idea of uh, PBX or KSU, key system unit, um, is, uh, let's say here is a PBX, private branch exchange, and there would be whatever amount of CO lines, CO lines coming in. CO stands for central office line. So this is from the city. That's the telephone lines are coming from the city and they are coming into the system. They're connected into the telephone system, PBX, private branch exchange. And from here, there are lines run to uh, telephone extensions. So this would be telephones in the offices, in the lobby, um, yeah. This would be individual telephone sets. The idea of PBX is to route the telephone calls uh, from the city into the uh, individual uh, telephone sets and vice versa. If somebody wants to select an outside uh, CO line, they can do it uh, either by selecting a line with the button or the system can be set up. So you press uh, nine to get out. That means nine to select a CO line. Uh, what is the, what the character, what are basically characteristics of the PBX, which is private branch exchange, uh, which is basically a box, a physical box, okay? that is installed in the facility, in the building, usually somewhere in the electrical room or utility room or something like that. Um, now the characteristics is the, the, the PBX can handle so many telephone lines, 
and it can handle so many telephone extensions. It also can be connected into PA system, which we covered uh, in previous lectures. Uh, so that would be the output of the PBX. If you want to make an all call page or, or do announcement in the speakers that we just, uh, we're still connecting during this week's lab, excuse me, uh, you can actually use the telephone to make the announcement. Yeah. You can also have something that's called music on hold. And sometimes that could be a radio connected or a, or a CD player or, or MP3 player. And that would serve as an input into the PBX. So if somebody gets put on hold, music on hold is uh, pumping through somebody's ears uh, when they're on hold. Also music on hold uh, is a structured business. Uh, somewhere in the States or in Canada, there are companies that are providing a service that is called MOH service, which is music on hold service. Uh, and uh, you can purchase, uh, businesses can purchase music on hold service that would be tailored specifically to their business. So let's say there is a um, shoe store or shoe store chain that uh, they want to have their own designated music on hold. So this would be a, um, a recorder or, or, or some sort of a IP based box, a uh, small computer uh, with electronics inside. And that would also be connected to the internet, to the cloud. So from the cloud to the cloud, also there will be another company logging into the cloud and uh, sometimes it can load the content and the content would be looped that would be tailored specifically to that shoe store so if somebody gets put on hold they can hear the advertisements that have to do with this, that specific store and once a month uh, or whenever it's required this company can call the company here and they can say okay we have new content we need some we have some new promotions new advertisements can you change the content so uh, what happens is that that company just presents the content, makes, makes the audio kind of a file that um, you know, maybe lasts three minutes, five minutes, two minutes, whatever it is. And it's going to load that audio file into this box and that is going to be looped. So whenever somebody gets put on hold, they're listening to that specific content. So music on hold is also a, it's also a structured type of a, a enterprise somewhere in the cloud um, now if you want you can you can research that online music on hold companies if you're interested in that all right we'll keep going with the content with our content yeah. All right, so over here we see uh, private branch exchange or KSU, key system unit, same thing. Uh, usually PBX is referred to something that is a bigger system. So let's say this, uh, it's a this one is a modular system. Uh, so the telephone cards or line cards can be added. So let's say somebody purchases 20 telephone lines or so something like that. And then uh, two years down the road, they say we have expended, uh, we need to purchase uh, maybe uh, eight more telephone lines or something. So they would, uh, the service, the telephone company would come in and add one more modules or one of those cards right here. And uh, they would connect that thing to those big frames, which we will connect uh, as probably our next lab or the lab after this. Okay? Uh, and that uh, uh, these are the interconnect uh, uh, frames that, uh, that route the wires. And I'm going to explain the cross connection to you as we go along. Uh, so now there are smaller systems, like for example, here, this one here by North Star Meridian. Uh, there are different uh, companies. Panasonic that ha has telephone systems, Toshiba has telephone systems, and there are a bunch of other third companies that, that uh, carry 
uh, different telephone systems. A lot of the telephone systems are computer-based, PC-based as well. <coughs> Excuse me. And they're characterized in different ways. But the, the, the idea is basically the same. Get outside lines and uh, shoot them over to the extensions, the number of telephone extensions. So let's say, uh, let's say if uh, there's a company that uh, has, uh, let's say, 16 telephone extensions around their offices or, or whatnot, and they only have four outside lines. Uh, yes, they have 16 telephone extensions, but there's very low possibility that everyone is going, all those 16 people are going to use telephone at the same time. So, um, uh, so four telephone lines is maybe enough for, for this. Maybe uh, they need eight telephone lines or something like that. So that depends on the telephone traffic of whatever the business is, whatever the company is. All right. So this little one here, uh, this is something that's called uh, three by eight, which means it can handle three telephone lines coming in and eight telephone extensions. Usually it is installed in small business uh, uh, situations. Uh, next step after that, uh, usually it would be uh, 616. You can see those uh, somewhere in some also small business scenarios. 616 means that there are six available, available telephone lines coming in. It's capable of handling six telephone lines or six CO lines or six central office lines. CO is a terminology that I'm going to ask you on the test what a CO line is. CO line is a telephone line, but it's a basic POTS, plain old telephone service line that is connected to the central office, some building somewhere uh, in our area provided by Bell, but it will be different companies, maybe AT&T in the States, um, and there's some other companies around Canada and the States that provide telephone service. So CO line is a central office line. Uh, this one here, so these two are set modules. Uh, it, it's, by, it's purchased as a, as a, as a basically a non-expandable system. So you can have either this one here, three by eight, and that's it. Three incoming telephone lines, eight extensions. And this one would be 616, capable of six incoming lines and 16 extensions. We have one of those in our lab. Uh, so next time you come into the lab or the next consecutive whatever weeks are going to come in, see if you can spot this box. Uh, if you can spot this box in our lab, it's on the wall. Right? And you can, uh, you can play with that. Right. Just uh, just have to remember that uh, COVID rules and regulations, uh, touching things and sanitizing things. Okay, so just don't just pick up the handset and try to uh, uh, try to play with that. All right, just ask me, I'll show you right now. Right? And this would be something that's called a modular uh, system. Modular system, which is right here, it's expandable. You can add things as you need more service. And these would be the um, the telephone sets that are associated with this particular, <clears throat> excuse me, telephone system. And this would be something that's called proprietary telephone sets, which means that this telephone set, uh, I keep, the mouse keeps disappearing on me. This telephone set that is associated with this telephone system works only with this North Star Meridian telephone systems. If it was a Panasonic one, it would not work with it. You need a Panasonic proprietary telephone uh, set. Um, or you can see, or also um, uh, telephone set or, yeah, telephone. Um, now, is it possible to connect regular single line sets or SL, right? SL again, SL set, single line telephone set is a pot, refers to, refers to pots, telephone set. Single line set, so basically, a single line set is a telephone set that utilizes one single telephone line or one CO line. 
And these are the phones that you buy in Walmart, hardware stores, whatever else. These are the regular pods lines. They will not work uh, with propriety, proprietary telephone systems. However, it is possible to make them work with those, but we need some additional piece of equipment, and we'll talk about that too. It's a very common piece of equipment here. Now, by the way, these are telephone sets. They're, they have their different models, depending on how heavily this thing is supposed to be used and how many features you're going to utilize in that. If someone is interested in installing telephone systems or uh, you get a job or you, maybe, you get, maybe you have prospect of getting a job with some communication company that installs telephone systems, talk to me, I will walk you into that basic terminology and the basic ideas of that. Right? Now this would be, um, uh, it would be a console, display console with buttons that you can uh, interface with the telephone. So it would be like one of those maybe, or one of these bigger telephone sets. And that could be sitting right beside it, usually used in the reception. So uh, you would have uh, buttons associated with maybe telephone sets. Those buttons are programmable. Uh, so that, for example, the first button could be uh, associated with a telephone set that's in one somebody's office. Uh, the next, next button could be another telephone with somebody else's office and whatever the number of extension telephone sets we associate those could be assigned to the telephones or the buttons can be assigned to features or they can be assigned to lines. And features would be, for example, um, uh, make a page. And there would be a different kind of page, make a page only for the telephone sets because these telephone also has, have speakers. So you can make a page only to the telephone sets or you can make a page to the speakers, outside speakers, or you can make page to both. So those buttons are programmable to handle that. Uh, you can have other features that is like a transfer, a call, or put on hold. Uh, no, actually not hold because there's a hold button right here. Okay, so these could be programmable to uh, be associated with the telephone sets or they could be programmable features. Okay. These here are BIX frames. Uh, BIX is a system uh, that, is, that utilizes something that's called uh, insulation displacement connection and we'll talk about that later uh, but uh, these 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 devices there's a these are frames that uh, wires are connected to that so some of the wires are connecting to these and some of the wires are connected to the outlets in the wall that the telephones are being plugged into and uh, you can have some frames that are on the left side for example so uh, there could be few frames that are associated with the telephone lines and then on the right hand side, you would have few frames that are going into the phones, uh, into the phone system here, or uh, there could be a frame that is uh, connected to the uh, particular telephone set. And, uh, and between those frames, you use something that's called a cross connect wire to connect between those. Also, we have those right by the telephone system that is on the wall in our lab. Uh, you can walk up to it, ask me questions. I will explain whatever I can, whatever you need to know. Now, uh, some basic terminology that has to do with, um, uh, with the uh, telephone lines or telephone system, technical lingo here. Uh, pulse or DTMF, dual tone multi-frequency dialing. So these two are interchanged. Uh, some of the telephone, well, most of the telephone systems are going, when you're programming them, uh, in, during the programming uh, procedure, you will be asked, how do you want the lines to work? Uh, usually, it is going to be uh, pulse dialing or tone dialing, okay? Pulse dialing is the old way of dialing, uh, which basically the line is interrupted so many times. Uh, so it's connect, disconnect, connect, disconnect very quickly. It sounds like tit, 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 something like that. And that would be a number. So this would be the old way of dialing. And some, maybe in some remote, remote far areas of the world, some of those are still being used. Only in Canada as well. 
Uh, so <clears throat> that uh, can be set up to that. So the lines can be set up to dial that way, or they can be set up to dial using a dual frequency tone. When you press a button, you hear a funny sound. What that funny sound is, is that it has two frequencies, one base frequency and one designation frequency, and they are set uh, by the industry that uh, they represent uh, numbers, certain numbers. Why do we have two frequencies? It's because two frequencies have to be present for the number to be recognized. If it was just one frequency, there could be anything, a truck driving by or ambulance driving by or police car driving by, or you can even talk or somebody singing on the radio and by accident they could hit that frequency and this could be mistaken for a number so that's why there are two frequencies that have to be present and whatever the sensing equipment is sensing that and if the equipment notices two frequencies at the same time of the specific frequency values then it's recognized as a let's say number seven or number nine or whatever okay so this is um, uh, this terminology has to do with Pulse or tone dialing. That's when you um, uh, when you uh, program the telephone lines. Ground start and loop start. This has. Uh, I'm not going to go into details, but ground start and loop start are types of physical connections of how the physical how the lines are physically connected from the city into the uh, into the building. In North America, we basically are using loop start. Uh, most of the times, or sometimes those phone systems that you install, they won't even ask you whether it's a loop start or ground start. It's basically programmed for loop start, but if you need to uh, uh, program whichever it is that is going to ask you uh, what you want this, uh, the line to, to be acting as, uh, we are using loop start in North America. Mm -hmm. Now uh, there's some future features. Uh, DOD direct outward, uh, direct outward dialing. It's a feature. You can program a button on a telephone to be direct outward dialing. So uh, it is going to dial a number outside of the facility. So it's going to select the line, dial a number. And you can program what the number is. Uh, Direct, direct inward dialing, this would be if you want to make a phone call that, has, uh, that doesn't utilize an outside line. You can connect uh, in your own building, you can try to dial somebody in some other office that is sitting two cubicles down the road, uh, down the road, two cubicles beside you, okay? or somebody office, so that would be internal, making an internal phone calls as, uh, as opposed to um, outgoing phone calls. Okay. Hotline. Um, which would be direct inward dialing or direct outward dialing with a specific number dial automatically. So hotline is a feature is that you don't have to dial anything. You just pick up the handset and that uh, number is being dialed. With the inter so the phone set can be programmed to, uh, as long as you pick up the handset, uh, a phone number is being dialed. Quite popular in some large department stores or you know, local bars or whatever, there will be a taxi companies would install their own telephones without the dialer, without the dial. Okay? It would just be you pick up and that thing automatically dials a phone number to their taxi service. Uh, so there'll be a hotline here, 911 and or set a single line connected. Okay, so 911 line or 911 telephone set. It's a single line set connected directly to a CO line and to a single line set bypassing the key system unit or key service unit. What happens is that sometimes, well, whenever, not sometimes, whenever you're installing a telephone system in large facility or a commercial facility, you are required to install a something that's called a 911 telephone set. What happens when you have a telephone system, that telephone system has to be plugged into power for it, in order for that to work. Now, just remember the single line uh, or uh, single line, the CO line, central office line, 
it runs independently of the power that is provided to the building. It uses its own power. So if the if the if the power is cut off to the building, uh, most of the time, or pretty much always, you're going to have the telephone's line still live. And if you plug in a regular, the most basic parts, telephone set or single line set that doesn't require to be plugged in for it to work, you can pick up and you're still going to get dial tone. And you can make a phone call. So those, those are considered to be 911 telephone sets. So if you are having a telephone system that services a huge facility, maybe with 200 extensions, 200 telephone sets distributed all over the place, uh, then, um, then you're going to, uh, you will have to install certain amount of 911 telephone sets. When the power goes down, that telephone set that's considered to be a 911 telephone set is not connected to the outside world. It's not connected to the outside world through the KSU. It's connected straight right up to the telephone line that goes outside. It bypasses everything. So if the power goes down, that phone still works. <coughs> Just so somebody can dial 911 if, uh, if they have to. Yeah. Now, when it comes to telephone installation, it is possible to install single line sets in a daisy chain configuration. So you just can connect a bunch of telephones in parallel. There's one line and you just tap in, you just tap in, tap in, and, um, and you can use those telephones. The problem with that is that if there is one telephone uh, that is being used and somebody doesn't hang up properly, uh, then the line is still occupied. So somebody else cannot pick up another telephone and dial a number because that line is still occupied. And if it's occupied for a longer time, it's not hung up properly, then it's being shut down by the uh, telephone company until you hang up and it just resets itself. So let's say there is a huge facility and there is a telephone, 911 telephone set somewhere in one end of the company, of the, of the building, and then there will be uh, somewhere far away Inside the building will be another telephone line that's also 911. You cannot connect those two that way, okay? Because if somebody doesn't hang up properly, you cannot make a 911 phone call from the other uh, telephone set. So each telephone, each 911 telephone set should have its own dedicated telephone line and only connect, be connected to it. Um, Single line or proprietary telephone set, we talked about that. Music on hold, we talked about that. Uh, dry contact relay. Okay, so dry contact relay, some of the KSUs or most of the KSUs, uh, the telephone systems, the, the, the box, if you will, uh, they will have output that is uh, considered to be a dry contact relay. So it can be programmed um, to for the relay to to trigger a dry contact. What is a dry contact? It's a contact that is not connected to anything else. You know how relay works. Here's a relay. There's a coil of a relay. And here is a switch with terminals that can be connected to something else. If you apply power to the relay, then uh, this relay closes the dry contact. You'll notice that this has nothing to do with the other power. So this uh, contact is closed dry, independently of anything else. And you can connect other things, like for example, you can connect uh, another power supply to it, and that can be connected to something like a night ringer, or a strobe light, or whatever it is, device. And that can be triggered. Uh, quite often used uh, in uh, large production halls where there's a lot of noise. And let's say there's a supervisor's office in the uh, large production hall, and that supervisor is not always sitting in, the, in their office. Uh, so you can install a strobe line on, uh, by the door or somewhere where it's visible. 
So if somebody is trying to get a hold of that supervisor and the supervisor is somewhere on the floor and if the strobe lights flashes, that means somebody's trying, to, you know, that telephone rings in the office so they can just go there and uh, pick up the phone. That's one way of uh, doing it. A night ringer is another way. Uh, it could be strobe light. It could be strobe light with the noisemaker or with a ringer. So it rings like a phone. Um, usually it, it's called a night ringer because it's, programmed to be only working during the night shift. So that's why it's called Night Ringer. And uh, when it, it's time triggered, so it's active during the night shift and it's not active during the day shift. Day shift. That's why it's called a Night Ringer. It doesn't have to be a day or night. It could be programmed for, for whatever, you know. So the telephones, uh, telephone systems are fully programmable uh, to the features that, uh, that are being used uh, you know, while communicating with outside or internal world. Um, using on dry contact, uh, paging interface. Yeah, paging interface is that um, some, well, in some cases you are going to encounter a situation that the paging system or the PA system or public address system is more a little bit more complicated. It, uh, uh, it will be consisting of zones such as offices, production hall, uh, ship in, re in receiving, and maybe some other departments that are distributed along the large area of a facility. Okay, so uh, those could be put on zones. Sometimes you want to page just the shipping and receiving, and some, sometimes you want to page just the production hall. Uh, and let's say uh, if, you, if you had just everything in one zone, uh, the people in the offices would hear all the pages that are going to the production hall that they don't need to hear. Uh, so sometimes the, uh, the, P, uh, the public address systems are switched to uh, or uh, program, programmed as zones. Uh, so then uh, it's not enough sometimes to just connect uh, things to the output of the, of the telephone system as one zone. Uh, sometimes you connect uh, the telephone system to a paging interface that it's going to act just like a telephone set. It's a box that has all the features of a telephone set. It can pick up the phone call automatically and it's going to give you a responding tone. Uh, once you dial the, because that, that, that box is going to have an extension, just like the extension uh, or a telephone set in somebody's office. So uh, it could have extension 239, for example. Right? You dial 239, that box is going to respond, it's going to give you a confirmation tone, uh, which you have to be trained on, uh, or whoever is working in that company, that, that means that either start talking or press a number to select a specific zone. So paging interface is a device that connects between the uh, telephone system and the public address system that could be more complicated. Sometimes you need a paging interface to translate the type of a signal. Okay. Um, CO line, central office, single line, which is a single telephone line, we talked about that. Roll over, I need you to know what that is. I need to, I'm going to explain this to you. Let me just make a little bit more room on my board here. Rollover or rollover sequence? Well, quite often what you're going to have is a, a company that will purchase so many lines because there will be outgoing and incoming traffic that would require more than one line or multiple lines. So let's say there's a company that produce, uh, purchases CO lines, so line one, line two, line three, line four, line five, okay? So these will be telephone lines coming in from the city and going into the uh, telephone system. Each line that you purchase, each CO line that you purchase from the city, it's going to have its own number, okay? Let's say, uh, you know, one, two, three, four is the phone number, one, two, three, five, one, two, three, six, one, two, three, seven, one, two, three, eight. All right, just a 
made up telephone numbers, non-realistic because we have uh, uh, 519 blah 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 all right for example but let's just say this is a telephone number okay so each line has its individual telephone line number and if you want to publish a uh, telephone uh, number to to the world let's say you have a business and you want to be you want to be reachable from the outside world so you're going to publish one number you're not going to publish all five numbers that will be a mess, okay? Plus, you want people to remember just one number uh, in order to uh, to reach you or your business. What if you wanna? If you what if you expand and you need more lines because your telephone traffic gets bigger, uh, and then you add maybe five add five more lines, okay? So uh, what happens is that uh, you're going to have to add and publish those lines. Of course, you're not going to do that. So what is going to happen is you're going to include those lines into a rollover sequence. It just goes like this. And it's going to come back into the first one. Okay. So you only publish one of those telephone numbers that are included in the rollover sequence. And so, so that's how it works. If you dial that number that you publish, you can dial any of those numbers, and you're going to reach that rollover sequence, which is going to come into the reception as one of the lines, one of the incoming lines. So that's if you have, um, if you publish one of those, it's just as if you were publishing all of them. So what happens if you, let's say you publish only this first number, Somebody and somebody is talking on that. That line is busy because somebody from inside made a telephone call that is talking to someone. So that line is busy. So then the system is going to select from the outside. It's going to roll over to the next line and that was going to ring. If that is busy, it's going to roll over to this one and so on and so on. And if this one is busy and this one is not, then it's going to go. So it's just going to into the loop. Okay, so that's what it means rollover or rollover roll sequence. Um, so that's, uh, okay, so these are rollover lines. That's the idea of that. Those rollover sequences can be, all, can be included in something that's called line pools. So let's say in the telephone system that is installed in the big facility, these five lines are in the line pool A, okay? And that is going to be associated with number nine. So if you pick up the handset, dial nine, it's going to select one of those, whichever one is free. There could be another 10 lines that could be included in line pole B. And it's say, if you, wanna, uh, if you wanna dial outside, just dial eight to get out, to select an outside line. So if you pick up the phone, dial eight, it's going to give you another set of lines. So Rollover sequence has something to do with this, rollover lines. PBX, private branch exchange. Private branch exchange, remember when we were talking about the central offices? Central office is a building, and in the good old days, like 1920s, 1930s, uh, there would be uh, manually selected. So if you want to make a phone call, uh, it would pick up the handset and some a human would answer that and will ask you who do you want to talk to and you would tell either the number or the name of the person if it was a small town. And they would patch you through using the tip and ring patch cords. Okay. Now things are um, a little bit more automated right now, so there are no humans answering. You just dial the number. So... Uh, this PBX, private branch exchange, is a miniature. It's a miniature version of that installed internally in the building. PBX, private branch exchange, instead of the central office exchange. Which is basically a KSU key service unit or key system unit. Uh, or sometimes it's called a telephone system, a box. PBX. ENAC number, automatic number announcement circuit. If you have rollover lines, 
let's say for example um you want to find out um what certain number is you know on the big frame on the connector in the utility room you have five lines connected and they are part of the rollover sequence and you need to know what the numbers are so if you dial the phone number if you if you plug in with your private handset or a installer's handset sometimes called a butt set because his hand hangs by your butt you know? Uh, you you clip onto that one one of those lines and you dial your cell phone number You're not going to get the telephone number of that line that you clipped on it is going to display the published number That's how it's programmed in the telephone uh, exchange uh, central office buildings. Okay facilities So what you need to know what you need to do is quite often if you have a telephone company that is providing a Pots telephone service, you are going to be provided with something that's called the ANIC number. And that is basically what Bell Canada number uh, has. If you uh, if you are in the um, if you are in service, you will dial the area code plus this number. And that if you as soon as you dial that number the system the ksu or the, not the ksu the central office is automatically going to pick up that phone call it's going to give you a bit of an enunciating tone and it's going to tell you what number you're calling from and it's not going to tell you the published number it's going to tell you the particular number that you're clipped on from the rollover sequence if that number is on the rollover sequence KSU key system unit parts, we know that. Uh, tip and ring, we went over that. Uh, ATA analog telephone adapter. Okay, that is a pretty useful uh, device here. Analog telephone adapter. Just make some room here. Remember why I talked to you about connecting the proprietary telephone sets that only work with the system. And if you have a telephone system made by Panasonic, it needs to have Panasonic telephone sets connected to it. If you have, <coughs> excuse me, a Toshiba phone uh, system, it needs to have the Toshiba particular system uh, phones to be connected to it. And <coughs> excuse me. And so on. All right. So, um, um now let's say you have a telephone system installed somewhere in the office in the building those tele that telephone system services different telephone extensions in the offices and here the system phones proprietary system phones that only work with that system let's say you have a reception another reception a, a lobby so there will be a building here and there will be a closed door that nobody can get in and but there is a bit of a foyer here uh, so there will be a door to the outside so anybody can walk into here and they would have a telephone here and sometimes you're going to have just a regular single line set because those can be damaged and they're cheap to replace but you can't connect that straight that single line set uh, into it into the phone into the telephone system because it, the phone system is not going to recognize that So you would have to connect that through something that's called a T a which would be uh, Analog telephone adapter. Okay, so that uh, single line set is connected to that ATA and that ATA is going to connect to the phone system and that is that ATA adapter is going to translate the type of a signal from the telephone system right into the single line set. Okay. Telephone single line uh, set or uh, ATA adapter, very very popular uh, and very commonly used uh, uh, piece of equipment when it has when it comes to dealing with uh, uh, telephone systems. Now those ATA adapters 
are also designated, they also are designed to work with certain systems. So let's say Cisco ATA is not going to work with the uh, Meridian telephone system or Toshiba. Okay? Toshiba system will also have their own ATA adapters that are going to translate the signal into SL, single line. Cisco phone systems are going to have their own ATA adapters that are going to produce, that is going to translate their signal into single line. Panasonic, you got it, okay? Also, the single line, uh, sorry, single line, ATA adapters are also used um, to connect the telephone systems with PIs, which is paging interface devices. Because paging interface devices, there will be companies like Bogan, for example. Bogan, that is a very uh, popular company that uh, produces uh, paging interfaces. Okay. It is not going to uh, have uh, their designers design a paging interface for every telephone system that exists in the world. Bogan, for example, or, the com or whatever other company that designs the paging interface, is going to have is going to design paging interface with the single line output. So you connect a single line set into it, and you are going to use the ATA adapter, which all the ATA adapters have the single line output, and whatever the ATA adapter is designed to to work with whatever the system is, it's going to connect to it. So that signal is going to be understood by that ATA adapter and you can have the uh, single line. So that's why uh, single line, uh, or sorry, a ATA adapters uh, are very popular. You have to really pay attention to, because there are some, some of the ATA adapters are not equal to each other. I had a situation uh, uh, once that uh, in a big facility, uh, there was a switch over to a VoIP telephone system. So uh, VoIP telephone, it was, the VoIP was by Cisco. Cisco is the king, basically, of the, is the Cadillac version of the, uh, but there are some good ones as well, some other ones. Okay. Uh, so everything was connected properly. Uh, the ATA adapter was provided by the company that we were supposed to install, but the paging interface did not want to recognize the, did not want to pick up and everything was doing, everything was correctly installed. Well, uh, the ATA adapter that was the newer model did not produce enough voltage for the paging interface to, to recognize. And we had to um, make sure that we ordered the older model that was capable of um, sending the proper signal to the, uh, to the uh, paging interface. Right? So sometimes you're going to have situations like that. that everything is, seems to be fine, but the newer equipment is not working as the older older one was. And uh, sometimes people don't know that. So when you troubleshoot things, sometimes you're going to have funny situations like this. So ATA adapter, battery present. Battery present is that sometimes you get a, uh, you pick up the phone you get the 48 voltage, 48 volts voltage, DC voltage uh, in there, but you don't get dial tone. So basically, obviously that would be, that would be a faulty line that the, uh, the dial tone is not present. So you can say battery is present, but there's no dial tone. And how can you tell is because when, uh, when you pick up the handset and you just play with the hook, all right? They just go close and open, close and open. You're going to hear some clicks in there. So that means there's a voltage going to the phone, but there's no dial tone. Battery present from the central office. Technical lingo. Uh, RJ stands for registered jack. It's a type of telephone jack that you use for telephone or data. RJ, very popular uh, term. Trunk, a multiple telephone lines physically bound into one cable. So there'll be a trunk, big cable carrying 50 telephone lines. Easy. Uh, 
uh, as I was talking. So these are, this will be the BEX frames and we're going to connect one of those. Uh, we're going to connect a 25 pair cable onto one of those. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this. Uh, this would be 25 pair cables going from whatever the field uh, and so the, 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 when you have a phone system installed or any kind of a system, it could be a data switcher or the IT equipment installed in the utility room, and there will be cables going into the hallways, different rooms that is considered the field. So this would be uh, cables going to the field, and there could be cables going to other parts of the field, and this would be cross-connect wires. So these will be big connections. Um, we will spend a little bit more time when we do the lab on this. Now, what's happening is uh, right now it's 10.57 right now, so you might have to go to other classes or have other classes online. So whoever has to leave, uh, by all means, uh, go and leave. I'm going to spend a few more minutes finishing this lecture. And uh, I'm, as always, I'm going to post this online, uh, post this on YouTube. So you can just go back and click on our playlist, which is included in the announcements, and you can see the end of this lecture. Okay? There's some information that you absolutely have to know. Okay, so... Uh, do we have to, do we have term test coming up? Yes, but now take care of the, just um, uh, concentrate on the quiz. Make sure you uh, complete the quiz uh, to, uh, by the end of uh, October 22nd, which is midnight, the end of the day. And then we're going to take care of the test. <clears throat> there was no final exams this year. All right, so we're going to, uh, so whoever leaves, leaves, whoever stays, stays, and uh, whoever I'm going to see uh, in the lab, I'm going to see in the lab. All right, so I'm going to continue with this. So here's the 25 pair cable. That's how things are connected, and we are going to connect one of those in one of our labs. The idea of that is that there's a cable that is 25 pairs, and those 25 pairs are color coded. So there are groups and their designation colors. And we talked about it last time. And this is basically how it looks like in the frames. You can also use on the other side, you can use the RJ21X standard telco cable pinout. This is the RJ21X jack. So they look like this. Those jacks look like this. And that would be plugged in into the telephone system. And the other end of that would be punched onto a frame. So you can cross connect to whatever you need to cross connect. This also is known as, <coughs> excuse me, uh, MPNL connector. I'm gonna go back a couple of slides. Uh, this 25 pair color code uh, is designed so everything is the same. So if you know, if you install a 25 pair cable onto a big frame and two years later, somebody else comes into the other part of the building and installs another one of those, it's done up to the same standard. So pair one is always going to be pair one, pair six is always going to be pair six, and pair 24 is always going to be on the same colors of wires. That's why this, the color code was invented. And over here, the Infinite connector or, or RJ21X, that's how the pinout is. And we recognize male and female part of those connectors because they can plug into each other. And that's what the Infinite connector looks like. Now, when you download the lecture notes, I'm going to encourage you to, <coughs> to click on this link here. It's going to be in PDF file. Click on this. There's a short YouTube video there out of the internet that shows how, those, how these connectors are terminated. We're not going to terminate those, but we're going to terminate these. Okay. Now, there's something that's called a butterfly tool. 
and the butterfly tool is used to terminate those. Sometimes you need uh, to terminate one male and one female on two ends, simply because well, you might need to extend a 25k, 25 pair cable from one place to another. Let's say there is a, a building that was already pre-existing and they are doing some modifications and this utility room is going to be moved somewhere else. So you're not going to pull another whole 20, you know, 200 feet of the uh, 25 cable, that pair cable that's going somewhere else, just because you need to extend 50 feet that way. You're just going to install one of those connectors on one end, the other connector on the other end, and just gonna plug them into each other. That's how you extend the cable. Or you can uh, also, uh, those are used to uh, plug in because those, um, um, uh, the telephone system, sometimes they come with the, outlet that is the RJ21X connector. Tip and ring, we have gone over that already in the last lecture. Also now was, uh, okay, early telephone exchange, but that's the slide from previous uh, lecture. Those ladies or the operators, they would use those patch cables, same as the guitar cable that we also use today. Right? and they would have tip and ring, okay. Tip and ring, tip and ring. So here would be the tip, here would be the ring. If you have um, stereo cord, so also known as a stereo cord or balanced cable, you will have tip ring and sleeve. So you would have three conductors going to it. And if it's unbalanced, you would have just a tip and ring. So uh, the telephone lines consist of tip and ring. There's no plus and minus. Uh, so now these are not, uh, not used anymore in telephone systems, but the terminology has stayed. Tip and ring, peripheral devices. So there's the tip and ring uh, uh, previous slide from previous lecture. Here's what an ATA adapter looks like. Analog telephone adapter one by Cisco and one by whatever it could be. I'm not even sure what that one is, or is this uh, the, this could be the back of this one here. Now, just uh, just think about it. Uh, sometimes you all, the, uh, when you're dealing with, um, um, telephone, okay, in some households, people order telephone over internet. Okay. So you're not getting a telephone line, like a, a, like a um, pods line, you're getting a dry loop. So you're not getting a single line, you're not getting a, a regular analog telephone line coming into your house. You're getting just an internet, so you're getting a DSL, digital subscriber line, and uh, telephone is done through the internet. And some of the companies uh, that uh, are installing that, they will give you something that's called a telephone box. Well, you know what? That telephone box, it connects into the router or your switch, or your switcher, or to your modem. And then you plug in your regular telephone into it. Well, you know what? They call it a telephone box because it's sold to the regular customers. But it is an ATA adapter. Basically, that's what it is. So that's for the consumer level. There's uh, some that's called a loud ringer. That's what we described a few slides back. Uh, is it a loud ringer? Different terminology. Sometimes they call it loud ringer. Sometimes they call it night ringer. Uh, this one would be ringing and this would be having a strobe light as well. Uh, usually installed in a noisy environment uh, in commercial. Uh, uh, systems. Uh, paging interface, uh, this one is, is actually by Bogan, okay? Uh, so you plug in uh, the telephone line here from the um, from the single, from the ATA adapter, from that one, you will plug in into it and once that, because you can dial, see the, the, the ATA adapter has a, an extension number, just like a regular telephone set. The system thinks it's an extension, it's just another telephone, except it doesn't have a handset. So if you dial it, it can be programmed to answer automatically 
and make a connection with the paging interface. And paging interface is going to sense, it's going to ring the paging interface. The paging interface is going to detect the ringing signal, which would be 90 volts DC, remember that? And then it's going to be programmed to answer and send you a confirmation tone, which means give me an input, what do you want to do? And it sounds like this, eh, just like that, okay? <laughs> All right. Um, so that means tell me what you want to do and then you will press whatever the numbers uh, are associated with this particular system to select a zone usually and uh, that uh, zone would be connected to a bunch of amplifiers or an amplifier could be connected to a distributing kind of a system of relays that would send the page either to the all facility or just the production line or just the hallways or just the offices or to everything else, depending on what numbers you press. So that's that's how you interface the. So there will be the telephone system uh, interface with the ATA, and that will be interface with the paging interface, and that will be connected with interface with the amplification system. Uh, color code. We did go over that last time. Uh, again, this is the USOC Universal Service Ordering Code color code. Pair number one, the middle two prongs on the RJ jack, registered jack. Line number two, tip and ring goes outwards. In the USOC configuration, the middle two prongs of the jack, line one, line two, line three, and so on. They count outwards. And this is uh, the old color code, which would be red, green, black, and yellow. This would be the new code, uh, which would be the first uh, first pairs of the white group. So you would have here the white blue, white orange, white green, and if you kept going, it would be white brown, and it would be one white slate, which slate stands for gray. Uh, what did I write here? The Universal Service Ordering Code, USOC, is a speci uh, specification system developed developed by Bell Systems in order to connect equipment used in customer premises such as home or offices into the greater public network. The USOC is basically a naming uh, convention of registered jack, uh, wiring configuration, blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, you know what? I just explained that thing to you, how this works. You can read that and make sense out of that. I wrote it some time ago. Uh, outlets or jacks, you can have screw terminal, this is a surface mount telephone jack, this would be a wall mount telephone jack, and this would be a modular telephone jack. Uh, you can notice those as being a data outlets for connecting computers, but those outlets, they can accommodate telephone jacks as well, but you just have to wire them as telephone jacks, not as computer jacks, not as data jacks. And I will show you the difference what it is. All right, connectors and plugs. Uh, so we talked about the outlets. Now these are the jacks, registered jack, RJ11, RJ12. You see RJ11 is the same as RJ12, except it utilizes more prongs. Uh, and that's what it looks like on the end of the telephone cord. It's a telephone cord. A smaller one, RJ22, is uh, um, the uh, handset cord. It's a tiny tiny jack that plugs into the handset. And here is the good old famous RJ45, which utilizes four pairs. It has eight prongs and it accommodates ethernet, okay? Uh, which is the, um, the IT signal um, that has to do with communicating between, communication between the computer and the switcher, for example. It's a computer line. Uh, connecting it together. All right, so like for example, when you see, um, what was that? Where is it? Where's that slide? Let's go back to it here. Uh, I'm just trying to find that. Here it is, okay? So this over here would be particular to this telephone system. Like it's, uh, for example, three by eight, which is three telephone lines in and, six, and three and eight extensions out of this box. So three by eight will be eight outside lines and 16 ex internal extensions. Or it could be 616, which is six line and 16 extensions. 
but uh, you need to know how those cell phones are connected because from here you're going to plug in the end panel connector and you're going to distribute that on the Bix frame and then from here you're going to have another frame that you're going to connect the field wiring that field wiring that goes to the individual uh, face plates that are distributed along the field which is the offices and whatnot you need to know what the pinout is okay? so this for example this particular pinout this is an example tells you how that phone system works where are we here so the pair number one would be the white blue pair so remember it's pair number one so it's 25 pairs which means it's 50 individual conductors so pair number one would be white blue and blue white and it would be extension 21 station one right? notice that they are not counting it one two three four uh in, in some of the, the extensions will be a 21 will be the first extension uh then the next pair would be orange pair orange and white pair will be connected to extension 22. So this would be from the 616 um, telephone system up to uh, up till you get uh, to 16 the extension uh, telephone set that would be considered extension 16, which would be 36 to dial. Okay, you pick up the phone and any other phone you dial 36, you get this phone ringing. Come on, mouse. Uh, all right, uh, so now if you will be three by eight, it will be only up to the eight extensions, obviously, right? Then uh, the uh, pair number 25, it would be music on hold. So you would connect the headphone out uh, jack. It would punch it into that pair to get in order to get music on hold. And you have to make sure that the radio station is uh, set to some clear station that you can listen to. Uh, now, auxiliary ringer, so this will be the dry relay contacts, exchanging external paging contact closure, some of the amplifiers. It's not enough that you provide a signal into the, its input. You need to also close the relay contacts. And the reason for that is that if you have an uh, amplifier that is connected input and the, uh, you have input connected to the amplifier uh, from the output of whatever the system is, and you have the volume turned up, uh, then the input will be receiving noise and you will have annoying kind of a noise coming through the speakers. So sometimes you need to have a signal going to the amplifier and you need to close the relay contacts for that thing to kick in. Somebody makes an announcements, hangs up, the relay contact opens. So that would be uh, the idea of having a relay contact. And there will be external paging audio. So this will be an output. So this will be the output that goes into the amplifier or into the paging interface if no ATA is used. Connecting it together, we have one minute left in our Zoom thing here, okay. Uh, this is the phone system. Now, how do you connect into this particular one? Sometimes you just plug in, there are outlets here. You plug in those lines, six, and you get 16 out and whatever the pinout was. It is uh, the big cross connect system is used to cross connect the wires. This is what it looks like. Here's an ATA adapter that can be connected to a single line telephone set. Through the cross connect, you can cross connect things into, you can patch those wires into telephone sets, or you can connect it to auxiliary ringer to close the switch. Through the ATA, you can also reach a paging interface, and paging interface can be interfaced with the uh, speaker system that we're connecting during the, this week's labs. And of course, you would have 911 telephone set, and notice that 911 telephone set is not going through the system is connected straight into the CO line. Okay. And I think this is the last slide. Yep, there's the references. Uh, okay, uh, thank you for staying with me and uh, I will see you during the lab sessions uh, this week or next week. Thank you, see you later.